More than 150 friends, family members, and colleagues had gathered in secrecy, at my invitation from months earlier, in downtown Fort Worth. They were waiting in black tie to surprise Sandra for a very special evening. Now, Sandra knew it was going to be a special evening, but she thought she was helping to surprise famed pianist Van Cliburn, whom we had known for several years. What Sandra didn't know was that Van Cliburn was never going to be there. When I walked in and flashes started popping, I thought my friends and I had spoiled the surprise that the real honoree was coming in behind us. It took a while to sink in that the party was for me. I was both delighted and humbled to see friends and colleagues who had gathered there from all over the country. Though I was trying to take in what was happening and going table to table greeting people I had not expected to see that evening, I was finally instructed to sit down. Somebody show Sandra her seat right over here by, right over here by Ryan, right here at the front. This has been going on for nine months, and I'm convinced it would be easier to have a baby. <laughs> Michael had a carefully planned schedule, and it began with his introducing the MC, our friend Bob Schieffer of CBS News. I was very impressed, Michael, when I heard you talking about the Washington conspiracies. You know, usually these Washington conspiracies, they get complicated, but they never work. This one worked. I have never seen anything like this. Other speakers included my agent, Maria Carvenas. And so tonight, with utmost respect and great affection, I salute you, Madam Author. the wonderfully irreverent Dan Jenkins. We both write about damsels in distress. Hers are usually uh, chased by some evil villain or something, and my damsel is usually in distress when something gets stuck in a zipper. Um, <laughs> my very Southern colleague, Rick Bragg, you were sitting there in the crowd, but another author was going on and on about, it was pretty deep stuff. I mean, it was serious, like New York, all black turtleneck stuff. And, uh, and, and they were going on and on about existentialism and character development and, you know, Asian deities and, and, uh, I was sitting there looking at Sandra Brown, thinking, my God, her hair sure is spiky. <laughs> and finally, the kind-hearted roasting was rounded out by a video message from Pat Conroy. I regret with my heart that I cannot be there. I'm in New York City when I should be in Texas, honoring the great Sandra Brown. But the best was yet to come when TCU's chancellor took the stage. 
Uh, Victor Bashini needs no introduction in, in Fort Worth, uh, but he deserves one because uh, he's put a new spring in TCU step. He's taking this school to heights that uh, some of us uh, who went there never thought we would reach. And so I hope you'll give him a real warm, a warm welcome because he's going to tell you a little more about what tonight is really all about. Chancellor Bashini. Michael always regretted that he felt like it was his fault that you did not graduate from TCU. And he told me how you were a scholarship student. Michael was sad about that, and uh, so tonight we're going to correct that mistake, Michael, and we're going to make it happen. Tonight, Sandra, you will finally get your TCU degree. We're going to give you the Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters. Well, Dr. Brown, yes, Dr. Brown, I'm, your, I'm sure you think that the reason we're here tonight is to celebrate your new degree, and that is definitely one of the reasons, but there's much more. Tonight, we're going to establish, through Michael's largesse, the Sandra Brown Excellence in Literary Fiction Scholarship Award. totaling $50,000 annually, the award may be used to cover room, board, and tuition, or any combination, for a year or more. In addition to the cash award, a desktop award will be given to each year's honoree. The award, conceptualized by Sandra Brown's husband, Michael, and designed, produced, and executed by a firm and foundry on the West Coast, is a unique bronze and marble sculpture weighing more than 20 pounds. The award signifies specific aspects of Sandra Brown's outstanding career as a writer of fiction. The ELF is a personification in bronze of the acronym Excellence in Literary Fiction. Other kudos came to Sandra during the evening in the form of a letter from former First Lady Laura Bush and former President George W. Bush and a personal message of congratulations via video from former President George H. W. Bush and former First Lady Barbara Bush. George and I want to add our congratulations to you on an outstanding career as a novelist, and we look forward to many more novels to come. Yeah, look, Sandra, I second what Barbara said and add my congratulations to you for your numerous accomplishments that you are being honored for this evening. All the accolades are hard-earned and well-deserved. Learning of the award and scholarship left me speechless, but being presented an honorary doctorate of humane letters by University Chancellor Victor Bocchini left me completely overwhelmed. Uh, it's an embarrassment of riches. Um, not the least of which are my friends and uh, my family. I haven't got around to everybody, obviously, yet, but I, I, I'm, I'm truly speechless. And I hope you can tell when I came in, totally suckered. A few weeks ago, we were in New York with the, the Fort Worth Symphony, and Van Cliburn was there, and, and we were at dinner with him, and Ann said, don't mention February 20th. <laughs> to Van, because he doesn't know it's a surprise for him. <laughs> so, I didn't. And uh, so we came in the door, and I saw, and I went, we came in too early. <laughs> and I was like, they think we're Van. Oh, sorry. And I, I was still standing aside to get, to, you know, I was like, new friends, recent friends, um, dear family, extended family, my dear precious children, and my wonderful husband. <laughs> Thank you for this night. I've loved it. <laughs> Thank you.